Freedom Radio Hour. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Freedom Radio Hour. I'm your host, DJ Adam Cruz, and I have my fantastic co-host here. Eddie Nicholas, what up, beautiful people? And welcome to Capital Radio 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Saddam. Boom, 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 boom. Adam, what is going on? I know we got a lot to cover today. We sure do. I'm telling you, it's like a really interesting time in the music business because there seems to be so much news around contracts and the math that we've been dying to figure out for the longest. Before we begin, we want to let our viewers and our listeners know that the Freedom Radio Hour is here, not only giving you fantastic music, but we're giving you great music business news and trends from around the globe. Today, we want to talk about two or three things if we have the time to cover it all. Uh, first, I want to talk about yet another leaked contract. You know, last week... Oh, my God. who is this? Okay, so last time, remember we were last episode, we talked about Sony Music's leaked contract between them and Spotify, yes, and uh-huh. we broke all that down. Mm-hmm. Well, this time there's been another leaked contract uh, between SoundCloud and their draft to independent music publishers. Okay. And so we'll get into what that means. The second thing I'd like to cover is uh, the amazing lawsuits that are occurring uh, against Pandora between mm-hmm. BMI and ASCAP. Those are performance mm-hmm. rights societies. So when you are publicly performing songs, you are or- earned a royalty, and if you're an artist, you sign up for one of the one of three at the moment, mm-hmm. which is ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC, and you can uh, you receive a statement um, twice a year and letting you know how much you've made or what you've made. Mm-hmm. Um, well, these companies have been fighting Pandora uh, off of the rates. You know, we talked about this before. It was very interesting. Let's jump right into this. What happened was that, uh, if you recall, Pandora kind of aligned itself with some mega giants, Mm -hmm. which was uh, Google and Amazon. And what they're trying to do is keep the rates down Down. that they pay to artists because it helps their bottom line. And that they can, and what they can do is they argue they can offer more services and more ways to enjoy the music if you keep the rate down. You and I side eye the whole thing like this. Mm-hmm. Because we understand that as artists, we're paid a fraction of a penny per stream, and no one can answer why that was, why that is so, and what are the steps that we are taking in a, as an industry to increase that rate. Because we, as independent music publishers, ought to be getting closer to a livable wage, which mm-hmm. is not a fraction of a penny per stream. Let me give you some uh, quick finds that I looked up. So Pandora and companies like Pandora, they're valued in the billions a lot of Mm -hmm. them. Uh, 1.5 billion as compared to the 40 million that they're arguing that they want to pay or not pay to music publishers. Let me say that again. So companies like Pandora, it's not just them, they're valued upwards of 1.5 billion and higher. And what we're quibbling about is roughly 40 million of that. Okay? So everybody kind of freaks out at this notion of, uh, you know, well, let's let these companies do their thing. Let's have more streaming services. But you and I have been breaking down in past episodes how that we have to be very careful because only certain ones seem to have a, uh, our interest in mind. Mm-hmm. Let me break this down. So this week, we got some rulings now from Pandora. So they've been in court because Pandora wants, uh, wants to lower their rate. What they pay to... Uh, what they were paying before was 1.75% of their of their earnings and they wanted to decrease that to 1.7 now BMI uh, wants to raise their rate they want to raise it to 2.5% ASCAP was trying to raise their rate equally as well so they're they're in court fighting that 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 problem so uh, they're at 1.85% at the moment so they went to this court. Is ASCAP. Yes, it's ASCAP. Okay. So ASCAP goes to court and makes their arguments to raise that rate. And the court says, no, <laughs> they will not raise that rate. So the rate, if you're an ASCAP, if you're signed up with ASCAP, which I am, and I know you are, mm-hmm. their rate is, has remained unchanged in terms of what Pandora pays them at 1.85%. Now, we had a similar lawsuit against the BMI. BMI was like, oh no, we're trying to get up to 1.5%. And that's still a paltry amount, they even quoted as saying. So they went to court and the judge ruled in their favor. So one PRO lost and the other PRO won. 
Hmm. And their percentages what that with two point. So now BMI enjoys the benefit of a two point five percent rate. So it's an increase from one point eight five to two point five. Well, that's still small. But my issue is, is why wouldn't ASCAP and BMI be sitting at the table together? Because everybody's out for themselves. I couldn't agree more. That was the biggest glaring thing. I'm like, wow, they really they're aren't really aren't leveraging their power to get the same rate. This most favored na- nations clause didn't apply to their lobbying power. And see, that's the problem. You know, the the music industry and they want to do all this muscling, but when it comes time for them to pull together, they don't. Both of those entities should have been sitting at that table together. They could have done a class action lawsuit. They should have done something so that whatever the rate is, they both could enjoy it. So if BMI won, they both could have enjoyed that rate. And it could have also uh, applied to other performance rights organizations to come. Exactly, you know, to sit at that table also. To set a precedence, because you and I talk about, we always wonder whether the lobbying power is there a lot of the times or not, you know? Uh, but we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to break down more of this contract. We're going to break down the leaked contract between SoundCloud and their independent music publishers right here. Where? Capital Radio 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of the day. Freedom Radio app. Live on Capital Radio 91.6 FM. What up, beautiful people? I'm Eddie Nicholas, and welcome back to Capital Radio 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sudan. I'm here with my buddy, Mr. Adam Cruz, and you're deep in the zone right here at the Freedom Radio Hour. We're giving you slamming house music, and of course, that music business news and trends from around the globe. During the break, we were freaking out about these lawsuits that have been happening. Uh, If you're just tuning in with us here at the Freedom Radio Hour, we were talking about Pandora's legal battles between BMI and And ASCAP. Those mm-hmm. are performance rights organizations that they uh, pay money to so that they can have access and use the music. On Here's the thing. Pandora is using the music. It's the backbone. It's the foundation for their business. It's not some side hustle. It's not some trivial extra supplemental mm-hmm. business that they're applying. The this music is, is the, the backbone. The music is the backbone. So this is why these battles become so important. You were, you were making this really great point. Please restate that. You know, in regards to BMI and ASCAP and Pandora, you would think that those two muscles in the music industry and those that collect our royalties, both of them would have been sitting at the same table. Right. I could have seen a class action suit, which may have brought other um, um, entities that collect monies as well for royalties. Sound Exchange could have been at that table. All these entities like that all could have been at that table to make sure that they all get the same amount. Oh, wow. That's right. And that, I think this is the glaring thing that I've, I've come across in these articles now. And and what's happening with these uh, leaked contract between Sony and uh, Spotify? And then we're about to break down a little bit of the, the SoundCloud uh, leaked contract. But what it basically tells us is what we already knew that the artist is getting the shortest little bit of the, the stick at the end of it. Continuously. Continuously. And the plans over time is to uh, give us less and less, not more and more. This BMI is a win, but we ought to not, uh, you know, start a dance in the streets because as we mentioned when we first started talking that this is a really low amount. We are mm-hmm. talking about millions when the companies are making billions. Billions. And off again, the back of and that again, music. It all goes back to when these contracts are being created from the start that all the parties are not informed. Why can't I be, if you're talking about my work, why can't I be at that top level where y'all are cutting up the cheese up at the top and then you want to disseminate it all down or however you do it. I want to be at that top layer. That's right. So when you get cut that check, and your company is worth one point something billion dollars. How do I merge myself to make sure that I'm some type of shareholder? That's right, because that. the music, the music is the backbone of mm-hmm. the business in those examples. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more with that. I feel like um, when you when you think about these rates and how much that they're lobbying, it's really a case of the legal team's mm-hmm. ability to argue, argue. their case mm-hmm. well. Because when I first mentioned this before we started our episode to Eddie. He's looking at me like, well, how is that happening? How one loses and the other wins? Shouldn't it be together? Mm-hmm. You know, and that it's just te- it's very telling how um, 
how out for themselves mm-hmm. these companies are. They're not talking to each other enough to the point where when they're going to the table, legally speaking, they're coming together as a united front. It sounds like a, a, every man is an island unto himself. And it's crazy because we're these companies are on. I'm telling, I say it again. The music is the backbone of these businesses. You don't think that we ought to come together and muscle up and say, "Hey, man, you have to have the same like a most favored nations clause." Why couldn't similar be uh, enacted so that anytime these these plays are put in, that everyone enjoys the best rate? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't get that part of it. Um, I'm not sure. Well, maybe you know those things need to be included. Um, when people start doing those contracts now that you are informing us about this First Nation Clause, which has been around forever, right. but at the same token, people need to know that they can now use that as some leverage in their contracts. Right, right. And you know, if, if these other companies can put it in their contracts, you can put it in yours, too. I feel the same way. Um, I want to talk about this leaked contract between SoundCloud and, mu- and ind- independent music publishers. Basically, SoundCloud uh, had this contract where they were agreeing to pay 10.5% uh, including ads to publishers or 22% of whatever money they make from sound recording rights. Okay, so SoundCloud, first of all, makes their money how? From subscription services and through ads, okay? But they're not they're not treated quite like a streaming services like a Spotify. Mm-hmm. If you recall historically, SoundCloud was really a, like a DJ's haven where you could post remixes or a mashup you did or a special edit of something. And no one kind of like bogged you down. They allowed it to be up and you could play and share it. Uh, but of course, as uh, streaming services grew over the years, SoundCloud started to uh, uh, sort of have a flashlight placed on it, and it had to tra- change up its model because it was literally imploding. So uh, now that it's switched up and be- is becoming more like a Spotify, um, they're scrambling now because they want to keep the labels that sign on uh, as part of them, mm-hmm. but they have to come up with a better scheme because mm-hmm. now everybody's a little more hip to how this works. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, not only that, when all of a sudden, without any warning, you start seeing stuff snatched down from your page because it's a copyright violation. That's right. And you're not selling anything. Right. Yeah, so I so that's I'm gonna we're gonna post the entire leaked contract on freedomradiohour.com so you could uh, peruse it and and decide what you're doing. But it's basically trying to develop. SoundCloud is basically trying to become uh, Spotify, where they offer tiers mm-hmm. so you could have like additional services. That's one tier. Mm-hmm. You could have full range catalog service mm-hmm. where there's downloading that incurs. You could keep things. Mm-hmm. You could not just stream it. So uh, that becomes a model for them, you know. But I feel like this is. Uh, essentially putting a band-aid on a gushing wound. Mm-hmm. But you know what, Adam? Hold that thought. We'll be back. Capital Radio, 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of today. Freedom Radio Hour. And we're back here live on the Freedom Radio Hour. Capital Radio, 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sudan. I'm your host, DJ Adam Cruz, and I have Eddie Nicholas, our fantastic co-host here. beautiful people. Breaking down music business news and trends from around the globe. Eddie. Yes, sir. These leaked contracts are crazy. Mm -hmm. I couldn't Mm -hmm. believe that Mm -hmm. basically SoundCloud is agreeing to pay 10% of all the money that they make to us little guys. And now we have to figure out, well, it wasn't signed. So SoundCloud, of course, is like, that wasn't the final contract, blah, blah, blah. But lots of articles have now come out to say that perhaps this is the nail in the coffin. Um, for for SoundCloud or yeah for SoundCloud okay. because I was before we broke I was about to say that I felt I feel like SoundCloud is this is like a sort of last ditch effort mm-hmm. to stay afloat but they came too late now in terms of the streaming services game see SoundCloud wasn't really that they were streaming yes but they were really offering this remix mashup opportunity for DJs mm-hmm. and music aficionados mm-hmm. now that's kind of imploded that didn't work because none of it was cleared mm-hmm. so um, now they're at a point where they're just starting to become their own kind of Spotify Mm -hmm. and they're too late so Spotify Apple is coming out and they have a huge uh, campaign that they're about to launch to support their Beats subscription service Spotify uh, has its work cut out for it already and SoundCloud is just dead last they can't compete now. Don't you think that if you come too late to the game and you come out and say, after everyone has already developed a car and say, hey guys, I got a car, nobody will care. <laughs> but people did care because 
um, you know, like you said, SoundCloud did provide an opportunity for people. Once again, it was a community. They had an established like a little community. Right. But again, that community needed to be supported with dollars. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. That reminds me of uh, our community here at Music. You know, uh, recently I was watching the Grammys, the last mm-hmm. uh, Grammys edition, and I was really pleased that there was finally a, a segment where they discussed and referenced domestic violence. Mm-hmm. And they talked about how... Um, how domestic violence is affecting uh, everyone in the world, especially those in the music industry. And it was actually, uh, they panned to Chris Brown, who had his own troubles uh, with domestic violence, and he was part of the people uh, speaking out in support of this uh, Mm -hmm. initiative to to raise awareness Mm -hmm. about domestic violence. And I, um, I thought about that recently because I just come to understand that I had a childhood friend of mine who's been a victim of uh, terrible domestic Mm. violence. And um, I mean, it was just horrible what's occurring to her and her children. Um, And I understand that her children were bearing witness to what was happening. So um, I pray for them. But I had to make mention here uh, as a last uh, note before we break that uh, if you're interested, go to freedomradiohour.com. Learn a little more about domestic violence. I'll be posting, we'll be posting um, the great statistics for Mm -hmm. domestic violence in the U.S., um, and uh, you can find out how you can uh, give to my childhood friend because we are all coming together as a community to see what we can do to help her. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for listening. Tune in to the freedomradiohour.com, djadamcruz.com, and of course, eddynicholas.com. Hey. We have a lot coming up. When we come back, we're going to be discussing new projects like Eddie's Do You Want to Dance EP. Coming Finally. Up. <laughs> Finally. Uh, we've got new artists that we've signed, Jacqueline Graham and Sajeda. Uh, we have, Shonda Nicholas. Yes, yeah, Shonda Nicholas. We mm-hmm. have a new record with her. Um, we have um, Flora Cruz, who's come back. She has a brand new record oh. with uh, 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 what do you call? Do you say Grecian? Greece, a person from Greece. Okay. Well, a pro- <laughs> yeah, a, gre- uh, a producer named Anthony K. Shout out to Anthony K. Rhythm Shout inside. Out, out. Him and Flora Cruz have teamed together. Flora and I wrote a tune for him uh, entitled "Untitled Love." Uh, it's a great record. So definitely tune in to everything that we're talking about and post under everything that we post because we want to hear from you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Capital Radio 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sudan. Boom, 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 boom. Eddie Nicholas, Adam Cruz. Peace out. Peace. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Freedom Radio Hour. I'm your host, DJ Adam Cruz, and I have my fantastic co-host here. Eddie Nicholas, what up, beautiful people? And welcome to Capital Radio 91.6 FM, the heartbeat of Sedan. Boom, 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 boom. Adam, what is going on? I know we got a lot to cover today. We sure do. I'm telling you, it's like a really interesting time in the music business because there seems to be so much news around contracts and the math that we've been dying to figure out for the longest. Before we begin, we want to let our viewers and our listeners know that the Freedom Radio Hour is here, not only giving you fantastic music, but we're giving you great music business news and trends from around the globe. Today, we want to talk about two or three things if we have the time to cover it all. Uh, First, I want to talk about yet another leaked contract. You know, last week... Oh, my God. Who is this? Okay, so last time, remember we were last episode, we talked about uh, Sony Music's uh, leaked contract between them and Spotify, yes, and uh-huh. we broke all that down. Mm-hmm. Well, this time there's been another leaked contract uh, between SoundCloud and their draft to independent music publishers. Okay. And so we'll get into what that means. The second thing I'd like to cover is uh, the amazing lawsuits that are occurring uh, against Pandora between mm-hmm. BMI and ASCAP. Those are performance mm-hmm. rights societies. So when you are publicly performing songs, you are or- earned a royalty, and if you're an artist, you sign up for one of the one of three at the moment, mm-hmm. which is ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC, and you can uh, you receive a statement um, twice a year and letting you know how much you've made or what you've made. Mm-hmm. Um, well, these companies have been fighting Pandora um, off of the rates. You know, we talked about this before. It was mm-hmm. very interesting. Let's jump right into this. 
what happened was that uh, if you recall Pandora kind of aligned itself with some mega giants, mm-hmm. which was uh, Google and Amazon. And what they're trying to do is keep the rates down, down. that they pay to artists because it helps their bottom line. And that they can, and what they can do is they argue they can offer more services and more ways to enjoy the music if you keep the rate down. You and I side eye the whole thing like this. Mm-hmm. Because we understand that as artists, we're paid a fraction of a penny per stream, and no one can answer why that was, why that is so, and what are the steps that we are taking in a, as an industry to increase that rate. Because we, as independent music publishers, ought to be getting closer to a livable wage, which mm-hmm. is not a fraction of a penny per stream. Let me give you some uh, quick finds that I looked up. So Pandora and companies like Pandora, they're valued in the billions a lot of Mm -hmm. them. Uh, 1.5 billion as compared to the 40 million that they're arguing that they want to pay or not pay to music publishers. Let me say that again. So companies like Pandora, it's not just them. They're valued upwards of 1.5 at the moment. So they went to court. This is ASCAP. This is ASCAP. So ASCAP goes to court and makes their arguments to raise that rate. And the court says, no, (laughs) they will not raise that rate. So the rate, if you're an ASCAP, if you're signed up with ASCAP, which I am, and I know you are, Mm -hmm. their rate has remained unchanged in terms of what Pandora pays them at 1.85%. Now, we had a similar lawsuit against BMI. BMI was like, oh no, we're trying to get up to 1.5%. And that's still a paltry amount, they even quoted as saying. So they went to court and the judge ruled in their favor. So one PRO lost and the other PRO won. Hmm. And their percentage is what, that with two points? So now BMI enjoys the benefit of a 2.5% uh, rate. So it's an increase from 1.85 to 2.5. Well, that's still small, but my issue is is five billion and higher and what we're quibbling about is roughly 40 million of that okay so everybody kind of freaks out at this notion of uh you know well let's let these companies do their thing let's have more streaming services but you and i have been breaking down in past episodes how that we have to be very careful because only certain ones seem to have a uh, our interest in mind. Mm-hmm. Let me break this down. So this week, we got some rulings now from Pandora. So they've been in court because Pandora wants uh, wants to lower their rate. What they pay to uh, what they were paying before was 1.75 percent of their of their earnings, and they wanted to decrease that to 1.7. Now BMI uh, wants to raise their rate. They want to raise it to 2.5%. ASCAP was trying to raise their rate equally as well. So they're, they're in court fighting that, that, that problem. So uh, they're at 1.85%.